Hey guys, I'm Jax and this is my spoiler review for episode 5 of season 3 of The Boys. So we got a lot more of Jensen Ackles, Dean Winchester's soldier boy this episode and I really liked that. I really liked that he's finally becoming, you know, a main character in this season. I just... So excited to see his Soldier Boy, and it's great to see him kind of doing some more acting and stuff. We definitely didn't get, like, you know, that much more, but it's good that he's finally here acting, exploding radioactive explosions everywhere, and, you know, just generally being awful. But not as awful as I kind of thought he might be, because it's the boys, and he's pretty much like a Captain America guy, like, frozen in time, or kidnapped by Russians and tortured in time, you know, because <laughs> it's the boys. But I, and you know, he's got the shield and stuff. So I kind of thought that this moment where he comes back in present day and he's walking through Times Square and Nick Fury's like, you're back in normal times, you know, but it'd be the boys. So he sees, you know, some, you know, different colored people and he'd say something horrific or, you know, he'd see some homosexuals and he'd say something horrific, but he sees an interracial couple of homosexuals and he just kind of goes, huh, all right. And I'm like, okay. Maybe Soldier Boy's not gonna be Captain America, but the worst. Like, I mean, it's it's always a bit more nuanced. That is what I love about the boys. That he's very nuanced, and I love that you know, like the deep, irredeemable. But sometimes you feel sorry for him because he, you know, has like some weird sexual chemistry with an octopus, and then he has to eat that octopus because Homeland is the worst man who ever lived. So there is nuance in the story and all that kind of stuff, which I love. But I did think that you know, Jensen Ackles, Soldier Boy would be just horrific and awful and have all like really dated old timey kind of values. So I did really appreciate that scene where he's walking around, he's got his big, big bushy beard and he's just like noticing things and he's just like, huh, this is all crazy. This is all pretty crazy, pretty new, bit different, but he doesn't see anything and go, well, oh, battle old in my day, we wouldn't have done that all back in my day. Oh, how dare they have this and that, you know? And so, I don't know, it's kind of refreshing to kind of have this kind of take on the character. I guess it was just my presumption of what they were going to do. And then that kind of follows up with the end of the episode. The big twist that I did kind of see coming because they're like, we need a gun to kill Homelander. And the other gun is a person. He's a p person gun. He shoots a radioactive beam of taking away your powers or whatever. So I kind of love that they're like, let's team up with Soldier Boy. And yes, Soldier Boy like killed, you know, Crimson Scarlet, Scarlet Crimson, whatever. The chick from The Walking Dead or whatever. But she like totally gave him up to the Russians. Like, I don't know, I feel like that's like a character-driven motivation of murder that I can get behind. Murder, not good, but I can get behind his type of murder in that situation. And yes, maybe Soldier Boy was the worst ever. Mother's Milk loves to be like, he was the worst man ever. And that creates a lot of tension and drama and, you know, all the thingies in a show. But I love that they're like, no, nah, no, nah, we're going to team up with Soldier Boy and Soldier Boy vs. Homelander, which I cannot wait to see. I feel like they haven't really shown as much of Homelander as the big Superman landing and shooting laser beams and killing people and doing lots of superhero kind of stuff yet you know like in terms of powers and like you know cgi craziness and i kind of feel like they're holding off for this big battle between soldier boy and homelander and i for one cannot wait one negative i did find with soldier boy is that we didn't get more of his slow walking smooth singing jazzy kind of hey hey it's the swinging 50s or 70s or 80s or i don't know what era it was but he had that kind of slow swinging sexy song moment in the other episode so i kind of think every episode should start with jensen ackles doing that song and little dance thing so i mean it's a weird criticism to have but apparently this show is not above having musical numbers now we get what has got to be the most absurd moment in the series so far like just so kind of like wait what? And Kamiko has had that singing song at the start of the season where it's like, oh, she wishes she could sing and talk and all that things again. And she does like a little, a little rasp gasp of like, you know, voice and says a word. And then it cuts into this musical number. Part of me loves that they like did a musical number and had a bit of fun. And it's like fun and dancing and singing songs and all that kind of stuff. And you know, it's just kind of inside her head what she wishes she could do. But also part of me was like, is this happening or is some form of this happening but less kind of choreographed and is then one of them gonna die or is it gonna cut back to them and they're singing in the bed and it's kind of cutesy and then like she's gonna get shot in the head i don't know i just feel like because it's the boys the whole time i wasn't like ha, 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 musical number i'm just like i'm really stressed i'm really like unpleasantly stressed like i feel like this is like a fake out like a you know when everything's so happy and everything's the best in the world and then you know the next second someone gets shot in the head it really just felt like one of those kind of moments like too good to be true and it's the boys so i don't know one plus one equals someone gets shot in the head but apparently no just 
a musical number. And I guess it's in her mind, so that all makes sense and stuff. But yeah, bit of fun, bit of creative singing, singing and dancing. And yeah, a little bit of fun. What I didn't like, though, was that right after Kimiko's like kisses him and Frenchie's like, oh, 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 I haven't been kissed by a girl before. So he freaks out and goes to get a coffee or something. And the only reason he gets all shy and embarrassed about it and leaves I mean, you can understand how it works with the character, but it really just felt like they were like, we need to have them kiss and embrace and be the happiest they've ever been. And then we're going to have him disappear. And then we had this forced tension of her being like, oh no, he, I kissed him and now he's run away and he's never coming back. No, he got kidnapped by evil Russian lady person he worked for. I don't know her name. Who cares? It doesn't matter. She was wearing an amazing dress or shirt tight shirt thing with the colors. It looked great. I loved her costume, but she's all like, come with me if you want to kill children or whatever. And he's like, I guess I gotta go. And so he gets kidnapped. Um, so I didn't like that forced tension, but I am curious to see what happens because they seem to imply that he did kill kids. Even though I feel like last season, his whole thing was that he accidentally let, you know, Iceman, but his fireman in the show kill some kids. And that kind of traumatized him because he's like, oh, I do bad things. Oh, I'm a bad boy. You know, but I don't kill kids. That was like kind of a line. So that was why he was so traumatized over that moment. So I'm a little confused why she's like, yeah, kids never bothered you before. Unless she's referencing that. I don't know. Just a bit unclear. Super curious to see where that goes. Speaking of kidnapping, Homelander is just still the scariest, most worst man in the world. He's taken over Vought and he's all standing there being like... Just bubbling away with horrific tension and just... He's... So close to snapping, and I'm loving every second of it. The performance from Anthony Starr is just sublime. He does so much with just like, you know, he's like, and he's just like snapping behind that smile, and it's just, it's fascinating and terrifying to watch, and I'm just loving it. My only fear is, it feels like they're really kind of ramping up Homelander, and I really do hope that him versus Soldier Boy doesn't end with him dying. I have no idea about the comics. I have no idea about any of that stuff, so in terms of that kind of stuff, I'm just completely like, who knows? But I think that once Homelander dies, or at least they get rid of him as a threat, like if he loses his powers and he can't get them back, I don't think he's an interesting character anymore. I really love just that idea, and I think they're just nailing that idea. Because there's so many, Superman, but what if he was like a prick, you know? What if he wasn't a good old boy and just a monster? Whereas I feel like this is really nailing the characterization of it, and the situation of him in this big political kind of media frenzy. Justice League and the way that he's like now in front of he's like the CEO well I mean Ashley's the CEO and I'm loving her this season as well like from her hair pulling out tense freak outs we finally got kind of a transition for the character which was really exciting now she's CEO she's totally under the thumb of Homelander which is also a really fun dynamic but I love that moment where Starlight's like be, come on, we gotta, we gotta join together and fight Homelander. How dare you let him do these things? And she almost cracks, and then she stands up, and no longer is she that freaking out, hair pulling kind of manic character. She's like, no, I'm gonna embrace this. I'm gonna, you know, control and like embrace my inner Homelander and unleash it. And she's like, I'm CEO. Get out of here. Make an appointment. Ra ra ra. CEO talk. And I just found that really exciting. Her character. Like, development over this series has been really fascinating, really fun to watch. Her performance is amazing. I'm loving her so much. She's one of my favorite characters. But, speaking of my favorite character, Homelander. Homelander is like, everyone do as I say, bubbling, tension, anger, all these things. But now, no more threats for Mrs. Queen, Queen, Ma Queen Maeve. Queen Maeve, Wonder Woman herself, she's like, I never loved you. I never loved you. And he just snaps and he's like, well, trick, I got a black noir behind you. And he kidnaps her, so double kidnapping for the episode. I am so, like, I, I do not want to find out what he's done with Quinn Maeve. Like, I really don't want to find out. I feel like we're going to get some exceptionally unpleasant, like, some truly awful stuff with him and her now she's kidnapped because he hasn't killed her. That feels way too kind of simple and clean and easy and just, I mean, that's kind of uninteresting as well. And I think if they're going to kill her, Black Noir would have come around and stabbed her in the, chopped her head off or, you know, stabbed her in the back or something. That would have been a shock, like, <gasps> So she's been kidnapped, so we're in for some... I, I think we're going to we're gonna get some stuff that makes Ramsey Bolton look like a Teletubby. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just... I'm not looking forward to it. Uh, hopefully she gets saved. I Once again, I, I don't know if she gets tortured and murdered by Homelander. So I really hope that doesn't happen, because I am liking her more and more. Especially when Queen Maeve's like, Ooh, Butcher, you don't like superheroes, do you? What if one wants to have sex with you? And he's like, actually, I... What? <laughs> hold on, hold on, Queen Maeve. When I said every superhero should die, 
What I meant is I want to have sex with them and then maybe later, once they've helped me kill everyone else, then I'll kill them at the end. Right at the end. You get to survive and maybe we'll have sex again. So I actually thought he'd also dose up on the V and they'd have superhero sex. Um, but no, he just withstands her Wonder Woman uh, thighs uh, by himself. So good on you, Butcher. That's that's impressive. I, I don't think I'd fare as well. I mean, I'm not trying to be self-deprecating, but no, I just... She seems like a whole lot of women. To be clear, I, I like that. It's 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 mostly the superhero powers. The, the super strength is really what kind of freaks me out. Was it that other scene in The Boys when that woman just crushed a man's head with her pelvis? Yes! It, it was 100% that scene. And the little Ant-Man scene where he calls up the dick. There is so much unpleasant. I just... I don't think I'd want to have sex with a superhero. There's just too many horrific ramifications. Just... I just don't think it's worth it. I mean, that's just me. Butcher's kind of a wild guy. He's a wild, crazy guy. Speaking of Butcher, more powers, more powers, powers for everybody. But Mother's Milk is like, no, I don't, I don't want to do these powers. And then at the end of the episode, I really thought he'd be like, oh, well, Soldier Boy, he sucks. He'll give me those powers. But then he's like, oh, I can't have those powers because I've been drugged because Soldier Boy is now on their side. So that tension is really interesting. I kind of think it's going to play out for a bit where they have a big confrontation in episode seven and they do a big punchy, punchy laser beam shooty shoots. And then Soldier Boy's like, Actually, I was pretending to be good, but I'm actually a piece of shit. Probably cue some kind of racist thing. Although I do think it would be interesting to kind of keep him being not an awful, you know, kind of old traditional kind of 40s or whatever kind of mindset and kind of just make, maybe just make him not a piece of shit anymore. Like being tortured by Russians and having his mouth open and them just shooting a machine gun in there, which also horrendous. That just freaked me so, uh, just... His torture seemed really unpleasant. I'm glad they didn't kind of, you know, give us a big kind of, you know, montage of everything that happened. Like, they just kind of went, yeah, you see a few things and that's that's enough. And he seems pretty, like, you know, broken up about it. Well, that's super broken. He's not all like, oh, I'm freaking out. He seems pretty calm and cool, you know. He's pretty Dean Winchester, you know, which I appreciate. Also, he gets rid of his beard. So, you know, trimmed Dean Winchester looking soldier boy, which I, I appreciate. He's, he's, he's looking good. God, that. It's a handsome man. But yeah, I do think Mother's Milk will try and get some kind of revenge on him. And then, I don't know, what would be really great is if maybe there's like a twist where it's like, actually, he didn't kill Mother's Milk's family. Like, I think that would be really interesting. And maybe Soldier Boy becomes like, not a villain. I just think that would be a really interesting take and kind of, you know, make Mother's Milk think about it all. And maybe there's another thing. But also, maybe it's just as cut and dry as it kind of appears to be. And he'll end up having a big punch on and be like, well, I guess I've got to shoot up that bee. And he's like, oh, instead of turning into a big puddle of water superpower or like you know a stone or something you know or just like long fingers where he's like oh this isn't a good power how am i gonna fight him now he gets the power like you know butcher where he's like oh i got homelander's powers that's gonna be convenient when i fight homelander mother's milk will probably get powers where he's like oh my god imagine if he just got like <laughs> he's able to shoot milk like a cow oh my god I feel, I feel like that's something the boys would do, but I don't want that. He's probably just going to get a power. It's like, actually my power is I touch your power and I get your power and you lose your power. Like he gets the boy, he gets Jensen Ackles power, uh, soldier boy's power. That wouldn't surprise me, but yeah, I don't know. I'm interested. I imagine that he is going to be like, give me that V. I, I didn't like the V idea cause we don't like superheroes, but I've got to stop him cause he's a piece of shit. So yeah. That's, I don't know. That's where I think the series is going. Another thing about the whole Soldier Boy is now a good guy. We're going to fight with Soldier Boy. Starlight really, really wanted to stop Homelander. She kind of felt like once that Harry Styles friend of hers character died, it really felt like, okay, that's the final straw. Like we've got to stop Homelander at all costs, like at all costs. And then this episode, she's like, when I said at all costs, I didn't mean team up with someone who's probably as bad, if not slightly less bad, but doesn't have a grudge against me or anyone I know. I didn't mean like that. That's the classic way to stop someone like this. Find another villain who doesn't hate you to kill the villain that hates you. That's classic. She hasn't seen a show or a movie before. Starlight. I don't know. I just felt like the way she reacted at the end of the episode, the music's all sad at the end. It's like, oh, Starlight's not on board with the team. She's not on board with the boys. Just felt a bit weird. Like, I'm like, I don't really understand where you're coming from, Starlight. Like, I, I understand where, where she's coming from, but I kind of disagree that she should be kind of coming at it that way. Like, she wanted the gun to kill Homelander. Now they've got a gun, but the gun is in the form of a sexy character from Supernatural. What more does she want? I don't know. I don't know. I just think she's coming at this the wrong angle. And I hope she changes her mind. 
which she probably will when he, you know, beats the shit out of Homelander and probably takes his powers. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm really excited for the fight and really nervous for Homelander to potentially lose his powers. I, I know that's a classic thing. Like, well, what's the character going to be like? Like, season four will deconstruct the character. Now he doesn't have powers. I don't want to say that. I love Homelander just being the big boss and just being like, I am God. I'm sick of, you know, that big speech he did. It's just, it's just so terrifying. It's such a sickening, intense feeling just watching every single scene he's in as he's just like bubbling away under that smile and it's it's intoxicating it's horrific it's fascinating i'm loving it so much so yeah that's kind of like only fear in the show it's just it feels like we're really ramping up to a homeland to kind of getting bit defeated or losing his powers and i'm worried how much i'm going to enjoy the show after that that being said i'm sure people are like oh Jess, don't you worry the boys knows what's up like they've got you covered there's oh you can't even can't even imagine what's going to happen which i hope it is because this show has been exceptionally good and this season has been my favorite by far so yeah i mean but that's just like a little not even a nitpick just like a worry for future the boys stuff i love the little brief moment of the deep coming in with the deeps like you don't like homelander then get out of here i like to fight crime on the water and on the land and you know every time the deeps in it i love it i love how his uh wife is always like whispering the things so she's clear writing a script for him and every time he like finishes a line of dialogue and he gets it right he like looks at her and she's like and he's like yeah nailing it I'm so good at acting <laughs> just a lot of fun. I'm really loving the deep. He's just so funny. We didn't really get that much of him this episode. We got a little bit more of A-Train this episode as well. And it turns out Blue Hawk, we thought he was a racist. And turns out, yeah, a racist. An awful, awful man. And he like throws a bunch of them everywhere. Injures friends and family of A-Train and all that kind of stuff. And I really expected A-Train to kind of, you know, do his like, I run fast. Like through him and smash him open. You know, rip him apart. Like, uh, you know, Huey's girlfriend at the start of the first episode. Or do something but it appears he's kind of brooding on it. And I really, like, he's had all this kind of, you know, that fake infomercial where it's like, stop, you would gotta all be together. He does that thing in the video, but he's like, for a drink, for, for V or whatever, for mother, you know, like an energy drink kind of situation and all that fun stuff. But he's been such a sellout. He's been so fake and all that kind of stuff. I really think a satisfying way to kind of redeem him would be for him to kind of stand up and proper take a stand, like take out Blue Hawk and then maybe kind of start taking out all the superheroes who are kind of being pieces of shit and kind of actually representing the way he's kind of pretending to. And I think that would be really, really satisfying. I do have a feeling it's going to get to that point where he almost does it. And then maybe he backs down and gets back into the seven. Cause this show is kind of, I don't know. It's really good at kind of making you really want something. And then being like, but the boys. So he, so no, it's, that's not a realistic thing for him to do. So I really, be really fascinated. And I'm, also unsure, have we seen him actually run this season yet? Except for in that, you know, in the movie, in that first scene. But I guess that's in a movie, so that could actually have been CGI, you know, like, in world. So I wonder if he even has powers, like, I would actually kind of love him to, like, do, like, a fast, you know, sacrificial thing where his heart gives out, but he kills, like, that racist guy at a racist rally. Or, you know, something like that would actually be really awesome for this character that kind of started the show by running through a woman and being like, my bad, and he runs away, you know. To kind of do that kind of running thing to kill a bunch of people, but like in a sacrificial, emotional way that is kind of like, you know, for a cause, for something that he believes in. I think that would be really, really awesome. And just another classic moment of the boys being like, that guy who was irredeemable, redeemed? Thanks for watching, guys. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment below. I would love to know what everyone thought of the boys episode five. <laughs>